so should be fine. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. And indeed, <laughs> it is the uh, topic that is combining the polymeric ionic liquids or the polyelectrolytes and ionic liquids. So in general, um, it's quickly about the lithium batteries. So everybody wants now the very good batteries, very low cost batteries, which have improved cycle life and of course, very high density because we want to use them in our smart devices and very specially we want to, to use them in our electric cars. So, and of course the conventional lithium batteries, they are very good. They have no memory effect. They are quite, uh, they possess quite high energy density, but they also have some problems. And uh, among the problems are the lithium ion transference number that is quite low. And of course the presence of the solvents that are thermally instable and they are quite flammable on heating. So, and here is a demonstration that is very clearly show how to uh, problems can be. Just a few years ago, you remember maybe that there was a limitation to go on board of the airplanes with Samsung Galaxy S8. Um, also, there was a new Boeing that is 787 Dreamliner and it had uh, huge problems with lithium batteries. And the last, uh, let's say example, is the burning of at least two electric cars in Paris. So all these, of course, um, was pushing to the development of new batteries and their new uh, electrolytes inside. And we know that started from 80s, there were two people, mainly Michel Armand and uh, Peter Buse, who introduced a quite interesting system that uh, is consisting of polyethylene oxide and the lithium salt. So these polymers were quite great. We cannot say that it's a polyelectrolyte, it's a polymer electrolyte. And they show very high dissolving ability towards different salts. And the ionic conductivity was high enough to make the batteries that are working at 40, 50, or 60 degrees, depending on the composition. However, these polymers were having quite limited electrochemical stability. And of course, again, low lithium ion transfer number. So recently, well, let's say recently, 10 years ago, um, there was the introduction of the new class of polyelectrolytes that we would like to call polyionic liquids. And these are polyelectrolytes. It's a special family of polyelectrolytes where we have at least one ionic center that is similar by composition to the structure of the ionic species commonly used in ionic liquids. And here you can see the examples. Uh, the most examples are, of course, metazolium, pyrrolidinium, ammonium cations, and the very Perhaps famous... there is polysulfone. Yes, and, and the others. So, of course, these polymers can be cationic or anionic. And uh, more recently, there was a new or another class from these polymeric ionic liquids that are called single ion conductors. In other words, it's quite simply, it's anionic peels that possess uh, the different anions that are chemically attached or bonded to the uh, polymer chain and lithium cation that is free to move. Normally, these are quite interesting polymers because they have some special properties, especially that only lithium cation can move and the strong concentrations are avoided, the, the gradients. So, here we would like to introduce five different approaches for the preparation of various uh, single ion conductors or anionic single ion conductors. And among them, um, I would like to, to show, uh, so the first, the second, and uh, the fifth families, they are mm -hmm. polymers. We have uh, random copolymers in number three, and we have cross copolymers in number four. So I will start from the rough block of polymers. And the idea was very simple. We would like to combine at the beginning the uh, polymers that are having the polyethylene oxide and the bending chain and the uh, unique liquid chemistries uh, with free lithium cation. So um, the synthesis of monomer was conducted in four steps or in three steps. And uh, we started from the commercially available uh, 
sulfonium uh, with acrylic monomer, transferred it to sulfonyl chloride, then attached finally the second part of the TFCI anion, and then exchange the ammonium cation to the lithium one. And as you can see on the uh, second step, the monomer represents the classical ionic liquid, while after the changing to lithium cation, it is crystallizing and it's representing a solid. Um, secondly, we started the investigation of the rough polymerization of the two blocks. So uh, we were trying to polymerize a PGM monomer that is blue on the slide. And uh, after elaboration, the perfect uh, optimal conditions of the reactions, we were able to fix this uh, block at 44 thousandths, and then we were trying to grow ionic block on the right and uh, varying the molecular weight of such polymer. It is clearly seen that uh, the optimal conditions that were found are quite great because we were able to obtain the, the polymers with the controlled molecular weight and the PDI were as low as 1.3. So this was done in DMF as a solvent uh, at 70 degrees and with IEBN as initiator. Secondly, the second block was growing also quite nicely with a small retardation time at the beginning up to six hours. The PDIs were also quite great below 1.5. And within this uh, determination of the optimal conditions, we were able to make a series of the block copolymers uh, with variable molecular weight. So the molecular weight was changing from 50 to nearly 90 thousands. As you can see, the TG was very good in terms of uh, its uh, low uh, value. So the TG varies from minus 60 to minus 40. Uh, and how these polymers look like? They were looking like a butter. So it's a very, very soft polymers that can be coated on the lithium surface. Uh, we were able to study the ionic conductivity of such polymers and depending on the temperature, at room temperature, this uh, single line conductors were able to show up to 2, 10 minus uh, 6 Siemens per centimeter. Uh, we were also trying to compare different uh, types of uh, copolymers. So we were studying the uh, free radical, random polymerization, the random rough polymerization of the block, and we were able to show that at the same composition, the block copolymers are possessing higher conductivity than the random copolymers or the copolymers uh, synthesized by free radical polymerization. And finally, after this, we were trying to understand uh, the electrochemical stability of the such block copolymers, and it was shown that we have up to 4.4, 4.5 volts versus lithium plus lithium. And you can see also on the left, very good lithium stripping and lithium plating. So these polymers were able to, to work up to 4.5 volts. And based on this, we were then studying the lithium transference number with a very famous Bruce method. The lithium transference number was 0 0.83. That is very high, uh, not nearly close, but quite close to unity. And then it was another problem because to create a solid polymer battery, you need to understand that when you have the liquid electrolyte that is shown on the left, you always have a liquid that is passing through all the components, all the solid components in the system. However, if you will just put the solid polymer electrolyte on your cathode material, there will be no good contact and there will be no passing of the electrons or lithium cations through the materials. So, to elaborate a very good battery, it is a need to put your solid polymer electrolyte both between the cathode and anode materials and in the cathode materials. So when we were able to, to put this, our solid polyelectrolyte, our block of polymer inside the cathode material, we were able to uh, create lithium batteries that were quite stable. They were working at 70 degrees. The cathode material was the standard one from industry lithium LFP or lithium ferrum PO4. And we were able to drain the specific capacity up to 130 milliamperes per gram at super 15 grade. So this was our first example of the lithium battery that we created with such materials. However, we were thinking, can we improve 
this uh, chemistry? Can we improve the battery working? And we got an idea that we can do more. So finally, we were using again the same raft approach and we were creating another block of polymers. We started from the polyethylene oxide and mod modified the polyethylene oxide. We attached two raft agents on the end of each chain. And this was the double or the B uh, functional uh, macro initiator that we used to secondly uh, react with our ionic monomer and to create the block of polymers. So again, we were able to achieve quite nice uh, PDIs. So the PDIs were uh, less than 1.5. The reaction was very controlled. We fixed mostly the uh, molecular weight of the polyethylene oxide block as 35 K. And then we were varying the molecular weight of ionic blocks from 8,000 to 26,000. So finally, we got very nice block of polymers. The block of polymers were again showing quite low Tg. Uh, yes, due to the presence of polyethylene oxide, we have the melting point here and the thermal stability was quite great. So as it is shown by TGA, the TNZ was 330 degrees uh, that we were getting for this block of polymers. So nextly, we started again ionic conductivity and we were able to uh, get the conductivity as high as uh, 10 minus 8 at uh, room temperature. So the lithium transference number was a little bit higher, again 0.91. And we were trying to find the optimal ratio between the polyethylene oxide block and the ionic blocks on the left and on the right. So after finding the optimal uh, ratio that is shown uh, by arrow, we receive this highest conductivity possible. And based on these block of polymers, we again uh, were trying to, to study the electrochemical stability. The electrochemical stability was nearly the same, 4.3 volts versus lithium plus lithium at 70 degrees. And here you can see the uh, composition of the cathode, of the composite cathode. So it's very clearly seen from the same uh, uh, pictures that the uh, cathode is quite homogeneous. The both the uh, carbon black and the lithium LFP are distributed quite nicely and covered with a polymer. And based on this, we were able to uh, create or to construct the next generation of solid batteries. They were also working at 70 degrees, uh, much more stable than the previous ones. And the specific capacity was uh, gained as high as 155 milliampers per gram. And the rate was C per 10. So uh, what is more important that these batteries were able to go to high charge speed. So we were able to nearly uh, increase the, high, the, the speed of charging uh, by five. So at C per two, these uh, batteries were still able to, to provide nearly 100 milliamperes per gram. But of course, uh, when we were trying to uh, conduct industry, they were asking us, can you do it as simple as possible? So random uh, or uh, block of polymers by raft are very good, but the uh, price of raft agents is still quite high. So are you able to more to to to, pre to prepare the uh, more cheap uh, let's say materials, and we were able to do this. So we sw we switch at this moment to free radical polymerization. So that is quite normal uh, for industry, and for this we will. Or it was necessary to create new ionic monomers. So here it is shown that we were trying to uh, create five new ionic monomers, and we were trying to see the influence of the um, side chain or the length of the side chain, the nature of the uh, attached anion, and of course the fluorinated chain at the TVCI side of the monomers. So we were trying to polymerize them and uh, to co-polymerize uh, with polyethylene glycol metacrylate uh, at different ratios. So here we can see the uh, ionic conductivity versus, versus uh, 
uh, ratios and it is can, it can be seen that the optimal ratio was seven to one so that is corresponding to ethylene oxide to lithium 76 to one so the conductivity drained at room temperature was 10 minus 6 that was quite good and here you see the comparison of various uh, free radical uh, polymerized uh, copolymers and depending on the structure and the composition, we have different uh, ionic conductivity. So finally, we can say that the addition of the fluorinated chains are totally not necessary for the ionic conductivity in the solid state. The TFCI9 is a little bit less conductive than uh, dicyanamide one. And uh, finally, the longer chain you put between the main polymer chain and the attached line, the higher is the conductivity of the polymers. So we took this optimal uh, polymer that was giving us the highest conductivity, and we were able to study further again the electrochemical stability that was around 4.2 volts again. Then we were assembling the batteries and as you can see the batteries were working they were quite stable at 70 degrees again we were using the lithium lfp as a, a catted material that allows us to compare all the batteries and finally we were able to get the specific capacity of nearly 115 milliampere per gram at cpr 15 rate uh, these results were quite nice but still uh, people are asking, okay, you were able to make it cheaper, you were able to make it more easy, but why 70 degrees? Everybody wants the battery to work at room temperature. So are you able to get the battery working at room temperature? Yes, we can. So at this moment, we were trying to liberate new type of uh, materials. We use the same monomer, the uh, ionic monomer. We use the PGM and we use the uh, polyethylene glycol demetacrylate as a cross linker. So we put only five weight percent of propylene carbonate as a, let's say, solvent and as a uh, stabilizer of these batteries. We were curing them in situ and obtaining quite nice cross link materials as a films that were further studied. So um, we were able to, uh, to get different cross-link materials with different ratios of ionic to non-ionic to neutral monomers. And uh, after studying the conductivity, we were able to see that the conductivity at room temperature was increasing by two orders of magnitude. So we were getting to 10 minus 4 Siemens per centimeter, again with a very, very good lithium transference number, very close to unity, so practically all our lithium cations were moving. And uh, depending on the optimal composition, we were getting this ionic conductivity and we were selecting this optimal composition to further study of the electrochemical stability. Here, the electrochemical stability due to the presence of uh, propylene carbonate was increased to 5.5 volts. And uh, thermal stability was still quite good. You can see the uh, two steps. And of course, the first step is the loss of propylene carbonate at 150 degrees. So we can say that till 100, these polymers can work easily at the batteries. And then we were trying to process the batteries. So we were trying to do this uh, very interesting process in situ. So uh, we were trying to, to make the positive electrode uh, together with our precursors, mixtures. Then we were spin coating, polymerizing, and we were doing practically the full battery separately and then uh, assemble it with lithium anode. And these batteries were working, again, very stable. So they were working both at 25 degrees at 70 degrees and uh, the specific capacity at 25 degrees was getting nearly to the uh, capacity of the theoretical capacity of lithium LFP, namely 130 milliamperes per gram per hour. Finally, um, what we can do else? Uh, the problem is still that we have the electrochemical stability that is around 4.2 volts. And if we want to go further and if we want to do something else, first of all, if we are speaking about fully solid materials, they were not that easy to apply for industry because they are butter-like materials. And the second problem was that 
uh, the electrochemical stability was always around 4.2, 4.5 volts. And this is limiting the cathode materials that can be used in these batteries. So we suggest on the last step of, the, of our studies to use quite an interesting approach. So um, we would like to polymerize and we polymerize the trimethylene carbonate, the very interesting monomer that is doing the uh, polycarbonate polymer or polycarbonate. So it can be polymerized using the raft agents with hydroxylic group. Hydroxylic group is initiating the ring opening polymerization. And you can see the optimization of the parameters. So we will be writing the initiator to catalyst ratio, the temperature, the time and the monomer concentration. And finally, we were able to get this macro initiator or macro raft initiator with around 20,000 uh, of molecular weight. Um, the study of the thermal properties allowed us to say that the TG is around minus 15, while T on set is around 150 degrees. And further on, this uh, macro raft initiator was used again for raft polymerization of our ionic monomer. As you can see, we obtained block of polymers that have both the ionic part and the polycarbonate part on the right. This, uh, the study of the properties allowed us to say that the conductivity was not that great. The conductivity was around 10 minus 10 at room temperature. So we were needed to, again, a little bit upgrade our block of polymers. And we did the block of polymerization uh, on the second step. Uh, we did the random copolymerization of ionic monomer and PGM. So it allowed us to make the block of polymers, but within one block, block a, we have the random copolymer of ionic monomer and PGM. So these polymers look like solid materials, not the butter anymore. And uh, at the next level, we studied the ionic conductivity. So with such a composition, we were able to get again uh, the uh, conductivity up to 10 minus 6. And what is interesting, the electrochemical stability. So that's what we were trying to, to look for. So this uh, carbonate block that is on the right was allowing us to increase the uh, electrochemical stability versus metal lithium up to four, uh, up to 5.5 volts. And this was amazing because uh, this allowed further to use another type of cathode materials. So. Moreover, as this was the block of polymers, the block of polymers which have immiscible blocks, we were able to obtain very nice morphology. So we have the cylindrical morphology. And then due to this phase separation and to still quite high ionic conductivity, we were trying to uh, study the mechanical properties. And you can see again that uh, the reometry shows us that indeed the incorporation of such polycarbonate blocks allowed us to increase the mechanical properties at both 25 degrees and at 70 degrees. So we can see the strong change both in storage and loss modulus of the materials. And this successfully was further applied for both batteries, not only the LFP batteries as before, but also the polymer NMC batteries. So these batteries were able to work with high cutted material, with high voltage cutted material. And these batteries were showing quite nice stability and very high specific capacities at 70 degrees. So finally, that's what we want to show at the last slide, that concluding remarks, of course, we have a target that we want to have both the high lithium transfer number, the electrochemical stability, and the flexibility and the ionic conductivity. And of course, the work is still ongoing and uh, some new ideas are arriving how to achieve better, better and better polymers. And at this moment, we are still working for the further development of these single ion conducting materials. So at the last, I would like to thank all my collaborators both in Russian Academy of Sciences, where I was originated from, and Politecnico di Torino, that were working on batteries very hard, and in Polymart Institute, that were uh, together with us synthesizing 
a lot of the polymer materials demonstrated here. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Alexander, first, uh, because uh, for being on time,